In manufacturing, different materials like steel or aluminium have to be heated up and cooled down. And both industrially and in the home, water has to be heated up and cooled down. And this energy is very expensive. It's important that we understand how much energy is required to raise the temperature of a material. Now it's not too difficult to work out what this connection might be. The energy needed to heat something up depends upon some quality of the material. It clearly depends upon how much you've got of it, that is the mass, and how much you want to raise the temperature. Now this first quantity, the property of material, is called the specific heat capacity of that material. So that we can compare the amount of energy required by different materials, we have to standardize on a particular quantity, which is usually a kilogram, and a particular temperature rise, which is usually one degree Celsius. The formal definition of specific heat capacity therefore becomes the energy needed to heat one kilogram of the substance by one degree Celsius. In symbol form, the equation is, as you can see, E, the energy required, C, the specific capacity, M, the mass, and delta theta, the change in temperature. In cooling down, a substance gives out exactly the same amount of energy as that required to heat it up. This following kitchen table demonstration is intended to demonstrate the process of finding specific heat capacity rather than for obtaining an accurate value. Here I'm putting an electric kettle onto a digital balance and then zeroing the display. Next to the kettle is a jug of cold water straight out the tap and you can see that the temperature is about 6.5 degrees Celsius. That water is then poured into the kettle which is still on the balance. The digital balance records the extra mass of the water poured in. So our key data so far is that there's 1.12 kilograms of water at 6.5 degrees Celsius. When we heat the water up, we need to know exactly how much energy we're supplying. To do this, we're using a digital energy meter, which has a second camera in front of it. On the top line is a time measurement, on the second line the power supplied, and on the third line the total energy supplied. That bottom line, however, only measures the energy in kilowatt hours and only to do decimal places. That's a little too inaccurate even for this experiment. Switching on the kettle as the meter ticks to 18 minutes, you can see that the power reading varies until it stabilizes and then drops from an initial high of about 2.7 kilowatts as the element heats up. The kettle is switched on for one minute and over that course of time I estimate the average power is 2674 watts. Immediately taking the kettle off its stand, opening the lid and inserting a thermometer, we stir the thermometer and allow it a little time to reach its maximum temperature. We started this experiment with 1.12 kilograms of water at 6.5 degrees Celsius. After a minute with an average power of 2674 watts, the total energy provided is 60, 60 seconds, times 2674, which comes to 160,440 joules. That is the total energy provided over the course of the 60 seconds the kettle was switched on. That energy input caused a temperature rise to what you see here, which is 36.5 degrees Celsius. Starting at 6.5 degrees Celsius, that's a temperature rise measured here of exactly 30 degrees. From the equations shown at the start of the video, the specific capacity is the energy input divided by the mass times the temperature rise, in symbol form C equals E over M delta theta. Substituting the figures for the measurements we have taken gives us this equation, which calculates to 4,775 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. Since several of our measurements were made only to two decimal places, it would be more proper to quote this value as 4800. This finding is about 10% higher than the generally accepted value of 4186 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. However, these were rough measurements where we made no attempt to insulate the kettle or to avoid heat loss by evaporation. 
Both those precautions would be expected if you were writing about this experiment in an examination paper. Thank you for watching.